guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review and today we're going to be taking you to the halls of fame of football in the game Dungeon Ball where you play one or two players it takes about an hour or so to play and it's for ages 13 and up we're playing Dungeon Ball by Garrett Publishing in which case you're basically going to be going back and forth playing this kind of tabletop football style game. The game is going to involve an offense and a defense, there's a board, you'll be rolling die, countering each other, trying to get from one side of the field to the other to score points. You're going to be able to try and make field goals, additional plays to get bonus points, and of course there's that famous Hail Mary pass which can potentially have you come back from a grave um, missed opportunity at the very end of the game. You're playing uh, until a certain amount of time runs out and time is going to be based on how the die roll as well as you're going back and forth with four downs for each round after you hit the fourth down and you don't succeed the play will pass to the next player in which they're the offense and it plays just like you would see a football game being played in real life. The only difference is I guess that you can't actually get a first down by passing enough yards in the game but otherwise it's very very similar reminds me of a game i played in, uh, on this old game gear i had called madden 2009 or something i don't know it was a while ago but it was played in board game form anyway i'll show you what it looks like and how it plays down below and then i'll come up and we'll discuss whether or not i think you should pick it up so here we have the one to two player game of dungeon ball all set up for two players and as you can see everything that it comes with including the box some die this little field goal marker that we put inside the box for when you want to try and make field goals there is the board of the game which will of course start on one side or the other depending on uh, who's going to start as the offense the different teams you can select and there's four different teams available here there's the solo mode deck there's this little cute football that moves back and forth throughout the board there's this die here that is also used whenever you're playing certain cards or trying to uh, stop players from being able to do certain things throughout the game. There is the score marker here, which will start at zero, but you'll move up and you'll use these little tokens to indicate how much points you have throughout the game. You've got these uh, these little points here, these little, uh, what do we call them, like lightning bolt tokens that you'll be using throughout the game as currency to attempt to juke players, uh, make a big hit, as well as playing your specific team cards. And then you're going to have the time. The time's always going to start at 29, and there's two parts to the game there's the first half time there's you know there's the first part then there's the half time then you play the second part so you'll play two sets of 29 minutes uh each player is going to start with their token in the middle of each of their player boards there's a secondary player board that will have your currency as well as what you can do as, as the offense or defense and then you have two separate decks for your team you're going to have the types of plays you think your opponents are going to make on offense and then the types of cards you can play whether you're on offense or defense and the cost to play on the card but that's pretty much what you get in the entire game of Dungeon Ball. And like I said before, when you're playing the solo player of the, uh, version of the game, you'll be utilizing these cards. But that's pretty much it. Looks like it reminds me of one of those old school style Nintendo or Game Boy or Game Gear style games set to life on the tabletop. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you how the game plays and we'll come up and talk about it. So here we have the game Dungeon Ball set up for two players, and I already talked about everything set up here, but one player is going to get three tokens, the other player is going to get four, and the person who starts off with the ball is going to get one of these. And every time you start off as an offense, you're going to get one of these tokens here. And then, of course, you'll choose sides. So this player is offense, and he's got the ball over here, and he's trying to go this way. The other player is trying to go this way. This ball here is going to represent the amount of downs in the game. One, two, three, and a fourth down and you're basically trying to get the ball from here all the way across before it makes a turnover on the fourth after the fourth down. Um, so let's go ahead and begin. I'll just show you how it works. So as offense, you're going to be moving your piece up, down, left, or right into one of the three different colors. And as defense, you're going to try and predict which way the offense will go. So it's going to look something like this. I think that he's going to try and go red. So I'll place this card down here. And then the offensive player will then select which way he wants to go. If he selects red, then you're going to afterwards reveal regardless and see whether or not he actually did pick the card that was going to be assumed that he would, he would go through. So, okay, so it says red. I've got red here and got two. Now, in general, you're going to have five die to roll when you're attempting to move across the board. But if you get called out, so if you go red and they, they assumed you were going to go red, you will lose dice based on the number at the top left. And there are a bunch of different cards in the game 
with ones and twos. So you're gonna have a red one and a red two, a blue one and a blue two, and a green one and a green two. And based on the number, we'll determine whether your uh, the offense is going to gain one or two dice or lose one or two dice. And in this case, because the offense went somewhere where it was predicted, he's actually going to lose two die. So he'll lose two red. Uh, he'll lose two die because he chose red, and that was what was predicted. After that, this player is going to go ahead and roll. Um, oh, additionally, too, when this player calls this player out successfully, he's going to actually gain one of these little little markers here. So he's gonna gain currency that will help him. So then this player is gonna go ahead and roll now. So he's gonna go ahead and roll this, and he's attempting to gather feet. For each foot, he'll move along the board one red space. You get two re-rolls in the game. Feet will help you move along the red, and the footballs will help you move along the blue or green. If you get this lightning bolt, that will account as currency if you end up with this, and clock will actually move the game forward, and then I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, so moving the game forward. Uh, so right now, uh, he's he had something like, like this. He's going to want the feet, so he's going to take these. He's going to go ahead and roll these as well. He'll roll them again. Okay, so he's done now. He's got his foot. He's got his two balls. Uh, he can, if he wants, play cards from his hand. Some cards are played during offense. Others are played during defense. These cards will either give you bonus specific token uh, icons, whether it be footballs or feet. Others will maybe you'll be able to gain control of the ball, or even better, <laughs> the touchdown counts for three points instead of six when you're playing against the offense. So he's going to move his, his ball up one, indicating he's moved one with this one foot. So after that, this will then go to the second down. So now red's on the second down, and he's stuck up here, which means he can only go to the right, to the left, or down, which means he's going to choose green or blue. So this player here is going to decide whether he's going to go green or blue. And he'll go ahead and choose one of these. Maybe he'll choose a blue one, put that face down. And then this player is going to go ahead and choose, bam, he'll go over here. Then reveal, oh, haha! -ha, I succeeded in not going to where you thought I was going to go. I get my five die. And in addition, because I didn't go where you said I was going to go, you don't get one of those tokens. And I get one additional die based on the number up here. So now he gets six die as opposed to getting four if he had chosen green. This will go back here. And he's now trying to get double footballs. So he's going to start rolling again. Same rules apply. Now, whenever you roll these time symbols, you cannot re-roll them and they will go off to the side of the board. And then you'll continue rolling. Okay, so that's it. He's got two footballs, which means he goes up one on the green, so he'll move the football up to the green area here. If he actually got four footballs, he'd move up to here, and if he got six footballs, he can move up to here, because you're trying to get to the end zone over here. He also will get one of these little lightning bolts, and then these three times that were set aside are actually going to reduce the time on the clock by three. One, two, and three, which is how half time will happen and how the end game will happen as well. This limits the amount of time on the clock. This will then go to number three, third down, and the game will continue. And play is just going to continue moving along the sides. He will choose what he thinks this player is going to go for, and then he'll move. The ball will move. Uh, what's additionally interesting as well is if he wanted to go, let's say he was here and he wanted to go to blue, he would actually have to get three footballs and then three more footballs just to go here. Whereas in order to go through the green way, he'd only need two footballs and two more footballs. So there are certain distinct paths that are better for this player to take. However, this player knows that. And so he's going to basically try and counter him in that specific way. But on the other off chance, if he actually knew for a fact that it was better to go this way, he might say, I'm going to choose blue because this guy's then going to give me more extra die to move across here. Additionally, let's say he got this far. Let's say he got to this player here, got to this area and he got to the fourth down. Um, after that happens, he's going to have one of three options. He can either choose to punt the ball back to this area here, where basically his opponent's side. He could attempt to make a field goal if he was from here down. So if he was from here down, he could make a field goal, which he can't. Or he can just simply attempt to make a final play. And once he made that final play, regardless of where he got, the ball would turn over. So if he maybe got to over here, the ball would then turn over, first down. And the other player would now be in offense. He would get one of these little tokens and the game would continue going this way. And he would be doing the exact same thing, it'd just re roll reversal and you'd move the ball this way. Some interesting things. So you can juke, so when you're playing offense, you can spend one energy to re-roll one of your offensive die, as long as there aren't these, as far as I'm aware. Uh, or if you're playing defense, you can spend two energy and roll this die here, 
And whatever it rolls on, you'll do one of these three things, whether it be discarding a die from the offensive player or moving the football back one red space or even two red spaces. And that's how you can use these. Finally, there are cards you can use, whether it be offense or defense. When you're playing defense, there might be things you can do like stopping players from scoring so high, utilizing um, a fumble. So you'll roll this die and attempt to get the symbol. If you can get that, then the other opponent has fumbled and you'll get, the, you'll get control of the ball and so on and so forth. And that's pretty much the entire idea of the game. Once the timer gets to zero, then the person who has control of the ball will get a last ditch effort to attempt to do a Hail Mary or something like that. Or if they're losing, they can try and do an onside kick. And then the ball will be reset. The player who was offense the previous round is now going to be defense. So in this case, this player would get to be the new offense. And the timer would start back up at 29 and play would continue. Uh, whenever you score, touchdowns i think you get six points and whenever you score a field goal you'll get an additional two point or one point and if you actually attempt to score the extra two points so once you get this ball across to here um you'll you'll your ball will go to here and you're going to attempt to if you want try and score again which can give you up to two points um and that's pretty much it for the game that's the main ways you're going to play there's certain cards that will change that additionally i'll talk about this when we come up as to how field goals work because there's two different ways that can function but for the most part that is the game dungeon ball let's come up and discuss it a little more and talk about some other interesting aspects of the game so dungeon ball first of all let's talk about this thing here field goal right this is basically what you're going to try and do to get points if you don't think you can score or know you can't score and it's also going to be a way in which you're going to try and score additional points after you make a touchdown and there's two ways to do it the first way is you'll take the ball and you'll throw it outside of this uh, outside of the area and put it in and you're trying to get the ball to land in between this little area here so if this ball were to go here good good on you you'll get points if it goes over here no points for you that's one way of pulling off or the two-point conversion is you take one extra inning or one extra inning one extra down and you try and get from one point to another point on the board if you can make it there you are going to score two points instead. Those are your two options as far as that goes. And of course, after a touchdown happens, you'll move the ball um, basically as though you punted it so the other player will now have a chance to go. And it just goes back and forth. If you have played football, if you have watched football, if you have heard about football, this game's gonna be fairly intuitive. There's a lot of things that are very, very reminiscent of the classic style games that you play football on your, on your console or whatever, as well as even just playing or watching the game football, understanding the two point conversion, a field goal, understanding how a punt works, understanding that you score six points whenever you hit a touchdown, that kind of thing. But if you're not so intuitive on football, it might take a little longer to understand how to play this game. But for us, it was pretty easy and we're not big football fans. I'm not a football fan at all, actually, but I've watched enough of it and seen enough of it to understand how it functions. A couple of the little things involving the rules that can be cleaned up, obviously, this is a prototype, so I expect the rules to be cleaned up, but things like juking, in general, when you roll a time symbol, that will be set aside. You can't re-roll it, which is how the game progresses. But when you use a energy to juke, can you re-roll that? I'm not sure. It doesn't really necessarily say. And then understand, like, just the big hit. When you spend two, you re-roll re -roll the die, uh, and it says discard a die. Do I discard the die, or does my opponent discard one of the die? Uh, things like that can be just a little more clarified. But overall, it's a very simple game. Each of the teams have their own unique decks of cards that will let you play certain things at certain times to help you and, hind and or hinder the opponent. There's this really nice little scoreboard here where you'll actually take the markers and place them up on here. Oh, I got 50 points now, which is really cool. It's very intuitive. It feels a lot like playing at a, a stadium, watching the scores go on and, and back and forth. There's a single player version of the game, which is cool, but I like playing the two player it does feel like football this reminds me of baseball highlights only in the sense that it does that game does a very good job of feeling like baseball this one does a very good job of feeling like you're playing football only thing with it is it only is a two-player game but what i would recommend if you want to play with more players you could if you wanted to have uh one of you play to play on teams 2v2 one of you plays with just the offense and one of you plays as that team's defense and you can do it that way and you can work together to talk about it so you could if you wanted to play more players however it really is a two-player experience which is a good thing to just basically say it's two players although i think it'll be really cool to show up on my live stream in fact we probably will play this on our live stream just because it's very simple as to how it works and it's fun to watch and maybe i'll put up a big scoring marker up here to show the scores going back and forth 
forth. We'll play teams or something. Uh, this is cool too. The fact that you can do this as a field goal, but also if you don't want to, there's a luck uh, based aspect where you can actually roll the die. And depending on how close you are to scoring the field goal, you might need one, two, or even three symbols of these little footballs. There's some interesting choices. Some choices are obviously better than others up until the point where you realize that your opponents are going to choose that choice, making it less of that less value. So then you have to really determine what do I want to do in this situation. This game is half luck and half strategy. The luck is going to come in the rolls of the die and how you choose to manipulate which way you want to go. And then these strategies are going to be determined as to which side is more important. Do I want to go for the easy route and hope he didn't choose that route, which will give me more die? Or do I think he's going to choose the most obvious choice and go for the more difficult one in hopes that that will give me more die? When you want to play cards too. Some cards can be played every half every uh, half. So in this case, you're going to play this for the first half and then you can, you'll can you get it back on the second half. And then somehow have stars, which means you can only play it once per game. Using these is important. When you want to gather the tokens is important. And manipulating when and how your opponents are going to move along the board is rather important as well. Overall, this is a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed this game. This is something I'd much rather play than, <laughs> than watch football. <laughs> it's, it's, it gives me the all enjoyment of football without having to sit there and watch it. I get to have, it, it happens in maybe a half an hour to 45 minutes, and I play with a play person who really enjoys football, they're gonna love this. If you know anybody who likes football, this is kind of like that fantasy football thing come to life on a tabletop. I don't know, I, I really, really enjoy Dungeon Ball, which I didn't think I was going to, because I'm not a big football fan, and I wasn't sure what to expect from a game like this, but it gave me a lot of nostalgia from games I played previously, like Madden on my game, my game Gear, that terrible thing that required like nine, eight batteries, and died in like two hours, but it was just so much fun selecting the plays you wanted to make, trying to throw the ball and get it as far as you possibly can, and even though I even lost the first two games I played of this very, very badly, I still had a lot of pl fun playing it, so that says a lot to the game. Overall, a fun game, something that I strongly suggest people who like football, or people who know somebody that want to give them a gift that like football, is a game you should definitely check out. Dungeon Ball, down below, currently on Kickstarter. All right, my voice is going out, let's do an outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer just getting over being sick review. If you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube, like, subscribe, and comment, as well as take a look at the game Dungeon Ball, which is going to be on Kickstarter down below. Click that link and take a look at it for all you football fans or people who know football fans. It's a lot of us here in the U.S. As, and, and football as in not soccer, like American football, which most of you probably know, but there might be some Canadians or people who actually play soccer more than football, and you might want to figure out the wording for that. As well as check out our website, unfiltheredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, tickets on our list, and more. We're giving away the game Elementos right now on the site. Pick it up if you'd like. Uh, there's a good chance of you winning because there's not a lot of people entering it right now, which is just fine with me. Check out our live streams every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one, and in fact, probably this one. Every week, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. PST, we have a growing number of people in the community, people that support us on Patreon, and let us play fun games like this so you get an idea of what you uh, may or may not want to pick up in the future for Kickstarter games. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I look forward to playing a little Dungeon Ball with you next time.